Are you sick of pouring your heart out to men only to have them use that information against you? Isn't it confusing to hear people say communication is key only for you to communicate with men and get treated worse by them for doing so? You see, the weirdest part about it is it's actually because you've been saying all the wrong things. On today's show, we'll be discussing five things you should never tell a man up front. That way you can avoid making the mistake of giving him the exact information that will lead to your demise. Number one thing that you need to understand not to be telling a man up front is how to make a custom suit. The custom made Prince Charming suit that he's gonna put on for you to make you feel like he's your perfect man. Giving him the information of exactly what your specific Prince Charming is. So, for example, when you go out on a date with a guy and a guy asks you, okay, so what are you looking for? And you say, okay, well, I, I hope you have five hours because I've got a list of everything I'm looking for. In fact, I went in Thomason's show and he advised me to write down an entire list and type it out. And I'm like an office girly. I'm like a corporate girly. So I typed out a 10 page list and you're thinking in your mind, this is great communication. He's asking me what I'm looking for. And now that he knows what I want in a man, he'll know exactly how to treat me in this relationship. So everything's good. Everything's dandy. Everything's perfect. That's what you thought was going to happen. But what actually ends up happening is he says, <laughs> the girl has given me the keys to the kingdom. We're going to steal her heart and we're going to steal her squirtle before she even has a chance to realize I'm not who she's looking for. <laughs> you literally give him a complete utter 360 surround sound understanding of exactly what you would like to have in a man now there's nothing wrong with experiencing the happiness of realizing that this is the relationship you've been wanting however you want to experience that when it's actually true and when that's actually what's happening you don't want to be experiencing that with a man who isn't actually invested in you you have to help yourself by giving yourself a chance to actually analyze him by who he is not by how well he can put on a custom-made suit to make you be in belief that he is exactly what you're looking for what i want you to do when a guy comes on a date with you and he asks you what you're looking for i want you to be as vague as possible be very general i'm looking for someone who's nice I'm looking for someone who's kind. I'm looking for someone who's funny. The more information you share with him, the more you're giving him the blueprint on how to create your custom suit. Very important that you don't give up that information and understand how it affects you and how it hurts you in the long run. Number two is letting him know your doormat history. Here's the problem. If I, as a guy, sat down on that date with you, wanting to respect you, wanting to treat you like a woman, wanting to treat you like someone who deserves respect. And then you literally go on a tangent about how much a man who you were just with disrespected you, mistreated you, ignored you, and you still didn't stand up for yourself to leave that relationship. Do you know what that's going to make me think? Huh? I came here and I was originally going to treat her correctly. I was originally going to be the person that she was looking for and be a gentleman. But it's clear to me, based on how she just described her ex, that I don't need to be a gentleman to get access to her. In fact, me trying so hard to put my best foot forward both makes me look lame and she probably won't even be interested in me. Horrible information to be giving him even if that is honestly true for you. I want you to present the past relationship like this instead. Coming to the realization that this relationship was not what I was looking for. I realized that I cannot give someone who treats me like that any more of my time or energy. And I really want you to emphasize this. That man who once treated me like garbage, he cannot even dream or fantasize about the idea of speaking to me again. He'll never get access to me ever again because the story that once went from you telling him your doormat history goes from that to being a horror story where he realizes, oh my God, 
Do you see how she treats guys that don't come the right way? I was gonna mess around here, but maybe, maybe I shouldn't. I kind of think she's cool. This is why it's so magical. The way that you can present yourself can drastically change how the guys approach you. Because when you present yourself slightly differently, all you're doing is showing him, this is what happens to the people who don't treat me right. This is the graveyard where they all lay in waste of the men who thought they could play with me. Now, I also want to be make you very aware this also applies to you telling him stories about how you allow friends or family to mistreat you. Number three, I do not want you to share with him VIP treatment. I know that when a guy comes along that you really like or you're really interested in, you start to make exceptions for him. It is one of the worst things you can do. What you're actually doing is you're telling him, don't put in as much effort as you were putting in before. I will still like you and still want to be with you even if you start putting in less effort. You will literally crush all possibilities of him coming to you with the mindset and the mind frame of I'm going to try to put my best foot forward in this relationship. You're going to crush that. So stop saying things like that, thinking that you're making this a more intimate, loving, close relationship that, oh my God, we are so obsessed with each other. No, you're just showing how obsessed you are with him and how you'll do anything for him without him having to work for it. Number four, you do not need to be telling him about your paint drying lifestyle. I know for some of you, your entire life is just about boys, that you have no career interests, no passions, no hobbies, no nothing aside from dating and being with boys. You're going to be communicating to him. Yeah, so usually most days I don't really do that much. Mm, I just kind of, if I don't work a shift, I just kind of like lay in bed and chill. No, yeah, I don't really, I'm not really that passionate about anything. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what I like. No, what you do there is you show him that you have absolutely absolutely nothing going for yourself when you tell men this up front they say to themselves huh that must mean if her life is so boring and uninteresting that if i come into her life with how amazing and awesome i am because remember all guys believe that they're amazing and awesome and way better than your last so when i step into her boring paint drying lifestyle i'm gonna bring so much color to her life that she will never ever want to leave me or leave my side because I am literally breathing life into her lifeless, uninteresting excuse for a life. When a man gets to step into your life from the very beginning and think that he is the be all and end all of your entire world, he will immediately begin disrespecting you because he is not of the belief that even if he disrespects you, you will have any sort of backbone or self-respect to be able to walk away from him. What I never want you to forget is that the most attractive, desirable version of you is the version of you that invests the most in yourself. It's just a function of how we operate as men. We are not the most attracted to the women who are heavily investing in us from the very beginning. And then we say, wow, look at you go. I want you. I want to be a part of what you have going on because you are desirable and you have a lot of value. And number five thing that you need to be avoiding telling men up front is about your open wounds. You don't need to tell him about all your deepest, darkest insecurities, how you're insecure about your nose or how you're insecure about your weight or your love handles, or you don't think you have the biggest dump truck. You have no idea who this guy is that you're dating. You're with a stranger. You have no idea if he's truly invested in you or not. You need to be very careful what information you give to him openly and freely because he could be taking that information of your open wounds and your insecurities and saying, ah, now I know how to trigger you. And it's not necessarily bad for you to discuss that with someone who's your partner, like your boyfriend or your husband. The problem is when you're discussing that with men who are strangers to you, that you have no idea what their actual intentions are or their motives are, you've given him valuable information to be able to emotionally control and manipulate you. 
Uh, anytime you get into a situation where you start thinking about trauma dumping on him, one of your experiences or telling him about every one of your insecurities, I want you to <gasps> you zip it up and you go talk about your open wounds with your girlfriend or your mom or your sister, people that are going to love you unconditionally until you grow and learn that person and understand them better over the course of time. That is the only time you will begin sharing with them. The reason I say it's too much power is because sometimes you don't realize, oh, it feels so good to yap. It feels so good to talk about myself. It feels so good to talk about my emotions and my feelings with a guy that I'm interested in. I understand that it does, but I also want you to be patient and I want you to be ready to give that information to the person who proves you can trust them with that information. In the process of you yapping, you give men a lot of the keys to understand how to emotionally control you without even realizing it. 